Howdy, AP Pre-Cal. It is Miss Cash. Today we are working on the notes for 2.5. Um, so these are the notes that I put together. The first page of my notes would be without your calculator, and the second page would be with the calculator. Um, I might grab a calculator for some of this just to speed up the arithmetic, um, but this first page is no fancy calculator features. Okay, so I start here with a warm-up. Um, and I'm going to grab a calculator. I'm going to go ahead and um, clear out my calculator just so that we start at the same place. Um, okay, so my calculator is cleared. I'm going to come in here to do this warm up. I can plug in these individual like values, but I'm going to come not statistic, to statistics, but to table. And I'm going to plug in this equation um, times, I don't know if I need that multiplication or the, the times button, but whatever. 3 over 2, raise that to the x. And then I can set the table. And I notice that I want to go from 0 to 5. So I'm going to start at 0 and end at 5 with a step of 1. Do I have to do that? No, I can always override things and like type in a number. Um, but it's kind of nice that it's already there for me. OK, so this is 64, 96, 144, uh, 216. Let's scroll down a little. Um, I mean, sure, you could practice plugging this in or take the previous number and multiply it by three, ha three halves. Um, so I generated this with the table. You can also come to the main screen here, type in that first value, 64, and then say times, what was that fraction? Three over two, and then I can just enter, 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 enter. The only trick is, oh, I'm having fun. The only trick is that I have to remember how many, like I have to count which one I'm writing. Okay, um, so there's this first one. And they ask, do either of the warm-up tables have a constant rate of change? Well, when I look at the constant rate of change, and here's where I just don't feel like thinking through subtraction. 96, this is ridiculous, minus 64, 32, I knew that. <laughs> so I add 32, I add, what is that, 4 plus, uh, I add um, eight, that, 48. I was thinking 4 gets me to 100 and I need 44 more, so 4 plus 44 is 48, but it came out really kind of funny. Um, this is 56 plus 16. Uh, 60 to 72. Okay, um, so it's not a constant rate of change, and then the rate of change of the rate of change is not constant. But what happens is with these, we can look first to see the, the proportion. So if I have 96 over 64, if it's um, a constant, I can compare these, these ratios. So I'm taking the different values, the, so 216 over 144. Um, so I'm taking this number and dividing by that. And notice that it's the same this whole way down. Um, so do they have a constant rate of change? That one didn't. Um, do either of the warm-up tables have a constant pro uh, proportion of change? They do. So what they're doing, the, the amount that they're changing has the proportion of three halves, which is what we were multiplying by here. Um, hopefully you've already looked at geometric sequences. So that common ratio becomes that constant proportion of change. Okay, the other one from the warm-up was, I'll come back to the table, here's a table. I have five times three to the X plus two. Um, oop, come down, plus two. Okay, notice that that makes a difference. Set, I think on this one, it's still set the way I want it. So these values are 7, 17, 47, um, 137, 407, 12, 17. Okay, so what I want to look at with this is um, this one in particular, if I look at, okay, so the first one, if I take the output values and do the ratio of the output values, the ratio of the output values is three halves. If I take the rate of change and do a, a, a ratio of the rate of change, um, this over, it's the same. So the output values came with the ratio and the, the, um, the rate of change has had the same ratio. It changes at the same ratio. Um, okay, but what's happening over here, if I do 17 over 7, um, well, that's not very helpful, um, and then 47, I think somebody left their calculator in my classroom, and I think that they're um, not from, from here, because SD, I think that's a different language. Um, anyway, maybe not. I don't, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Okay, but I'm changing it from, because I, usually it's fraction to decimal, Yes, I don't know. Okay, uh, but the whole point of that, I'm sorry, is that this ratio, 17 over 7, 
is not the same as this ratio of 47 over 17. So looking at this individual ratio is not is not helpful. But then what so if I see a problem like this in just a second, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. In just a second, I'm going to give you a table and ask you to come up with a rule. Um, right now we were practicing um, and we're kind of figuring out details from the rule. What does that tell us? On this one, the, the first thing I'll do when I see a table is I'll look and see, do my output values have a common ratio or a proportional change? Or um, if so, fantastic. If not, then I have more work to do. Um, and so then I would go to, okay, well, let's look at the rate of change. This was adding 10. This is adding 30. This is adding 90. I think um, we should be adding 270. Um, and then I think this is adding, um, well, okay, I'll just verify. Um, that's 12, 17, minus 407. I think it's... Um, 20, no, eight, <laughs> I knew that, but anyway. Um, partly I knew that because this is where we see that ratio. You'll notice 30 over 10 is equal to, well, to three, but 90 over 30, which is equal to three also, which is equal to 270 over 90, which is equal to three. All of those are equal to three, which was the value right here that was the base that we raised to, to whatever power that. Um, and so does it have a do either of the warm-up tables have a constant proportion of change? This one, the, the output values didn't have a constant proportion, but the rate of change of the output values did. Okay, so now let's look at this table. First thing I might do is say, okay, well, what's 162 divided by 243? Um, that fraction is two-thirds. So what I can do just to verify, oh, sorry, could you see it? Is I can start with that first value, hit enter, and then have it generate it recursively. So two-thirds and multiply, multiply. Is this giving me the values in my table? Yes. Okay, so, excuse me. I do have a constant rate of change. Um, I do have a, a constant proportion. I didn't have a constant rate of change. I said that wrong. I do have a common ratio. I do have, this is an exponential function. This will be in the form y equals a times b to the x. So when these numbers themselves give you a, uh, the, the ratio there is, is the same the whole way down, then you don't need to worry about adding something to it. Um, and so what I can do is I know that that amount that I was multiplying by each time was two thirds. So I have f of x is equal to a times two thirds to the x. Now you may notice, well, the initial value becomes this a, and so 243, so our answer is 243 times two thirds to the x. Um, but if you're not sure, or if I don't give you that zero term, then you can always say, okay, well, f of something, um, the easy one is zero, f of zero equals a times two-thirds to the zero, um, and that would equal 243. Um, I'm trying to stay out of the next problem. Um, so anything to the zero power is one, so a is equal to 243. You could have also done that with a different value or whatever. Um, I think you could also, if you want to think in terms of sequences, you could say that our f of x is equal to 162 times 2 thirds to the x minus 1. If that's confusing, don't worry about it. This will show up in multiple choice. Um, so if you can't find your answer but you find this, I, yeah, we'll just have to see what College Board does for us. Okay, the one underneath it behaves in a similar way, and um, for the sake of time, pause this right here and go try that one um, on your own, and when you come back, you may discover, uh, so did you pause it and try it? You should do it. Go practice this. There it is for you. Um, I'm not going to work through it, but it's exactly the same style as the one right above it, and I think it becomes 5 um, times 4 to the x. Let's see if I'm right. Um, 5 times 4 to the x, not 4, to the x, there it is. Um, on this one, yeah, I think my table is set just fine. 5, 20, 80, 3, 20, yeah. So I was, oh, sorry, now you can see it. Um, I was way zoomed in. Okay, try that one, see how you do. Now let's look at the other scenario. Am I zoomed in too much? Okay, here's the next one, and then, then I'll do the same thing and let you try this one on your own. Um, okie dokie. So on this one, yeah, we got to zoom out a little bit. Um, we're going to look at the calculator. I'm going to come back and um, check my ratio. So 93 over 13 is that 493 over 93. Does that have that? No. Okay, so notice those, this is not going to have the same um, 
it's not in the form y equals a times b to the x because the ratio of the second over the first does not equal the third over the second. Did I say that correctly? Anyway, I think we're good. Okay, so what we will do is this will be in the form y equals a times b to the x plus some, and I'm going to use a d because typically the c would move it left or right and we don't want to worry about that. I mean, you can, but that just complicates life, so don't do that. Okay, um, so let's look at the rate of change here and see if we can find a proportion in those. Um, I will zoom in a little bit. What did we add? We added 80. What did we add here? We added 400. What did we add here? We added 2,000. And then I think we're adding 10,000. Okay, so I notice, how do I go from 80 to get to 400, and then here I'm multiplying by 5 the whole way down, which tells me that my B value is 5. Okay, so I can see that I'm multiplying by 5 this whole way down. So this is times 5, this is times 5, this is times 5, um, which gives me that B is equal to 5, and I need more space. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my... I'm going to write my rule um, and say, okay, so f of x is going to be equal to a times 5 to the x plus d. And now let's pick some points. Okay, so I can say f of 1. I can pick any points on here, but let's just not make life harder than it needs to be. Um, this becomes 5 to the 1 plus d. And what did f of 1 equal? It was equal to 13. Okay, let's look at f of 2. I think for my little darlings, the puzzle piece today has you um, has you tell the the very the like the coefficients in these in this system. So I probably I didn't look I I, <laughs> I was looking over the puzzle piece I wrote for last year, um, and I think if you use one and two or the the two smallest values in the table, it would probably be what gives you the coefficients. Um, if not, I'm sorry and whatever. We'll talk and move on from there. Okay, and so the, when I plug in two, I get 93. For the rest of the world, you don't even know what I'm talking about, so you're lucky, <laughs> or whatever. Okay, so what does this tell us? This tells us that 5a plus d equals 13, and that 25a plus d equals 93. And I see a system that's pretty straightforward to, um, to solve. My d's, I have the same, so let's make one of them negative. I wanna work with positive numbers, so I made the top one negative. This gives me 20a is equal to 80, which means that a would equal 4. Okay, um, and then if I plug that back in, 5 times 4 plus d is equal to 13. What do I have to do? Uh, 20 minus 7, so d equals negative 7. Okay, so my equation is um, a times b to the x plus d, and so 4 um, times 5 to the x minus 7. Now, some people can see, um, and, and it's kind of taught in some of the AP world, that we can look at this and say, well, if I came through, I can take this whole list and I can say that um, I can add 7 to everybody. And when I do, I just need more space. Here's my x and here's my, this becomes my f of x plus 7. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so if I add 7, I'm at 20, I'm at 100, I'm at 500. I'm at 2,500. Do you see how I'm adding seven to each of these? I'm at one, two, five, zero, zero. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, now you might notice, oh, well this is times five, and this is times five, and this is times five. Okay, and so you're like, well, fantastic. Um, and then how do I get um, 20 right here? Well, it'd be four times five to the one would be equal to 20. But I didn't want 20, I wanted 13. So 13 itself right here, This um, so if I look at a table where I have my x and I have my f of x um, at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I have um, 13, what was it, 13, 93, uh, 4, 93, uh, 2, 4, 9, 3, whatever, okay. This would be 4 times 5 to the 1 minus 7. And maybe, you, so, they, tr they teach this a little bit in some of the AP material that I've seen by recognizing, oh, if I can add or subtract something to this list, um, then I can find the ratio here and, and kind of go from go move on from there. Um, and like this one would be 4 times 5 squared minus 7, because that's 100 minus 7. Um, sometimes, though, it's really tricky to see this list to, and then figure out what I need to add or subtract. 
Okay, so I'm showing you both options because um, if you see it, fantastic. It might be quicker. If not, the system, which is upside down, or, oh, the system will always work. Um, and I like the system because I don't like to guess. Uh, I mean, I like to be smart and be, you know, be efficient, um, but uh, sometimes it just becomes like you're spinning your wheels trying to figure out what, what to add or subtract, and that's just annoying. Okay, um, so this is where you are to pause the video and go try this one. Okay, so pause the video, try this one, see if you can come up with the rule. You'll notice it's the same format as the one above it. Um, and now you're back, okay. Um, I don't remember this one off the top of my head, so um, I was just gonna give you the answer. I don't see it quite as immediately. Um, what am I adding here? Uh, 20, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> I can do the hard math. Um, okay, so what is this one? Uh, this is embarrassing. Nope, that's not helpful. <laughs> uh 90 okay so this is we're adding 90 this one we're adding um 540 which hopefully this would be um times six so 540 times six means that i'm adding this so if i add that to the next if i add 653 plus that did i get yes i did okay so plus three, two, four, zero. Okay, so my, my the, to go from here to here, we were multiplying by six. So my B value was six. Okay, let's get a little more. So then I have um, F of X is equal to A times six to the X plus D. Um, F of one is equal to A times six to the one plus D is equal to 23. Can you see that in my table? Um, F of two is equal to A times six squared plus D equals 113. Okay, what's my system? Six A plus D equals 23. 36 A plus D equals 113. Subtract, subtract, subtract. This gives me 30 A is equal to 90. So A equals three. Do you have to do it this way? No. Will this always be correct? Yes. Six times three plus D equals 23. And so this is, the D value is five. So hopefully you got on your own just a second ago, three times six to the X plus five. All right, come back for the next video where I use the calculator. All right, like, subscribe, comment, let me know how things are going in your pre-cal world. Goodbye.